But if you want to understand how a megger works, it can be better understood if you compare it to water flow, which we all understand that, right? You got a piece of pipe and you're going to put a pump on the end of it. And what that pump's going to do is it's going to shove water down through that piece of pipe, right? All right, so let's think of that piece of pipe as a copper wire that's got insulation wrapped around. That's your insulated copper wire. We're going to put a pump on the end of that too. It's called, it's called a megometer, right? Think of it as a pump because what that megometer is going to do that your multimeter couldn't is it's going to push a lot of current down through that electrical power cable. Look, this is going to put out a thousand volts or more. It's going to really exploit that wire, which we want to do if we want to determine if it's in good condition or has these thin insulation pinholes or cracks. It's a non-destructive current, but it will exploit anything in weak in that cable. So with a water pump, right, as you push water down through that pipe, we experience what we call friction or friction loss. That's very, very common in water flow. In megometers, we're looking for resistance, all right? So again, if you kind of look at it as compared with water flow, it makes it a little easier to understand because if that pipe that has the pump hooked up, if it ever sprung a leak, guess what? You're gonna waste water, you're gonna lose pressure. Well, same thing happens up here with the electrical cable. You get a thin spot in that, or you get a nick in it or a pinhole, you, you know, you're gonna have an electrical leak and a megometer is going to pick this up. A megometer can almost tell you where a pump and motor may be in its whole life expectancy. Referred to as an analog meter, that's, that was around, that's been around a long, long time. Commonly used 20, 30 years ago, still used today. But the thing about an analog 